I got a question how to deal with multiple opponents and this is a unpredictable situation mostly but I want to share some ideas what we can uh, keep in mind and uh, what we can possibly hopefully do so check it out so the first thing is what we always train when we perform kata just remember musubidachi ends here and it's not about the outer uh, posture it's not how it looks it's more about the inner posture in this case okay so we uh, normally we perform tandem breathing so we anchor our karate mode and at the same time our side line is wide open so let's see very I can still see my hands here uh, so I really open up with my vision or my vision field okay and uh, if you have time if you are not suddenly attacked and if you see for example two guys coming closer and you just sense oh this might become a conflict or uh, you talk to one person and others are slowly uh, joining in for example so if you have some time uh, take one second or whatever to get back to your karate mode uh, tiny breathing calms you down you get more centered more grounded and also when you get into your karate mode you notice hopefully more that uh, going on around you. So I think this is the first important step. And in this mode, when you perform tandem breathing and you try to notice everything around, then uh, don't focus on discussions that are going on. If the other person talk, talks bad about your mother or whatever, it's not, uh, don't think about complicated answers or anything. It's really, uh, Play low level in your conversion, try to de-escalate always, but play it low level and try to sense everything that's going on around you. That's uh, very important. If you get mentally stuck in the discussion, you won't notice what's on the left and right and, and maybe behind you. Now, when it gets to a fight, really, you need a quick leg work. So moving is the key. Okay? A good warm-up or a good preparation for this is just running sideways. So if you do this, and also this. So, when it comes to a fight, uh, it will be your goal to just fight one person at the same time. So, you have to move. That If there are two opponents, they should be behind each other. That's very important. So, if you have two opponents, the right and left, you are really getting in trouble. Okay. So, if I have my two opponents behind each other, huh, this guy behind, this guy can't reach me, okay? And I can work here and, well, he won't stay there, of course, he will move. Yeah? And this means, if I just put some movement into this, yeah? this means that I, I have to, to react, okay? I have to move, like the running sideways. Yeah? I, I just change and try to, to stay to have just one opponent in front of me. Okay? That's a very important part. Because I have to move that fast with my feet, I must train to uh, keep balance and to have a solid grounding when I attack. So we can't just run around. We, Of course, we have to fight those, those two or more guys. And this uh, could, could look like this. We just run in a circle. Suddenly you come forward, run, then suddenly you run forward, run, run, run. 
I would, if possible, I would avoid high kicks because you must be very fast on your feet. And if you, if you raise your leg high, it's, uh, you really lose time. So uh, if both are uh, moving very fast, both opponents, not uh, when I demonstrated it, uh, the dummy was just fixed on one point, but when both are running, it's a very dynamic situation and you run out of gas quite quick. So it's really more the sideways, hands up, be prepared, and if you see a gap, attack, throw some punches and go out again. That's, yeah, that's important. The transition between quick footwork and solid, strong attacks. Maybe you have just one, one chance to hit the other person. So this must really go through. Use what you already train. Use your bunkai. Now imagine both opponents are behind each other and you make it to give it a strike, hit the face, give your knee, for example. Then the other person maybe bends forward. Okay? And if the other person bends forward, it could, could happen that you manage to make a guillotine. A neck choke, uh, fix the person, and this means you can, with the head under your arm, you can move. Uh, so, if the other person is moving around, or maybe carrying a weapon or whatever, you have a uh, living distance, so to say. Uh, if you choke the person totally out, the whole body weight will drop instantly to the floor, uh, then, then you can't carry the person around. Okay, but yeah, if you have them like this, or what I show in my in the video library, if you catch the throat, put the other hand here, yeah, it's like a hold. We have many cutters. Yeah, this way, heavy arm, hand to throat, squeezing the throat here. With this you can also move and uh, take it as a chance to keep some distance. One thing is sure, if you start a grappling match, a stand-up grappling, uh, you have very bad chances. Okay? If the others are running around you and the other person holds you, it's uh, very likely that you are kicked and punched from behind or whatever. So uh, try to avoid holds if possible. Yeah? Or you really get the person bending forward and then pull the person down and control it in this way, okay? But uh, don't stay eye to eye and hold each other. This can be uh, devastating. Okay, I hope this is helpful. But, uh, well, those multiple attacker situations are really unpredictable. So this should be trained with uh, partner drills on and on, really. And uh, yeah, there will be uh, some videos coming to my video library in which we uh, add stuff that is uh, standing around uh, in a restaurant, for example, or <laughs> wherever. 
and uh, also many many possibilities when you f when you drop to the floor and you are maybe not fully unconscious how to protect yourself when the others are coming and try to kick you and how to get up on your feet and everything. so we will uh, this will be uh, built up as soon as I'm allowed to meet different people in Corona times and as soon as I'm allowed to make this video. Okay, so go ahead.